Hello again team, it's Jess or Jashi Karen, and welcome back for another how-to video. Today we're going to be looking at gradient lettering and some of the ways that you can achieve this in your journal. Before we jump into it though, just a couple of things, and firstly a bit of a disclaimer. How successful your gradient lettering actually turns out depends on a range of factors, mainly down to practice, tools, and techniques. In terms of the tools, it very much depends on what kind of pens you're using, what kind of paper you're trying to do this on. So doing some practice on your pen test page or somewhere else in your journal before you commit to doing it on any spread that you're working on is probably a good idea. As I mentioned, another factor is practice, and the more you practice these techniques, the better you'll get at them. And another thing to be cautious about is that because a lot of these techniques either require you to go over the same spot multiple times with your pen, or maybe involve water, or quite inky pens depending on what you've got, there is the possibility of getting either ghosting or bleeding happening, so please do be careful. For the techniques that we'll be going through, as you can see we have six of them here, and for each of these I've just printed off the word hello, so they're a little bit more comparable at the end. And one or the other doesn't necessarily look better or worse because of my hand lettering. As per usual, all of the equipment I use in today's video is linked in the description box below. But without further ado, let's get into it. So first of all, what is gradient lettering? Likely if you've clicked on this video you probably already know that, but just in case you don't. It's a style of lettering or text effect where the letters have a gradient inside of them. So for instance, like you can see with the header on this page, we have a gradient of a light blue through to a darker blue. This is just one example, and of course there is huge amounts of inspiration online. And if you're looking for some inspiration, I do have a link to my gradient lettering Pinterest board in the description as well. The real focus of this video though is how do we achieve that? Starting simple, the easiest way to achieve a gradient in your lettering is just by having each subsequent letter have a new colour. This one is pretty self-explanatory, but what you do is pick out a range of colours that make a gradient, and then when writing out your words, change the colour with each subsequent letter to follow the gradient that you selected. I prefer to do this style of gradient when I'm doing block letters compared to calligraphy, just because then you don't get that harsh contrast between one colour and the next, where the first letter joins to the next letter. So by that I mean like here where we have the E joining the L, and you kind of have that colour line where the yellow is separated from the orange. To fix this though you can do some slight blending. And in order to do that I just take the lighter shade of the two, so in this case it would be the yellow rather than the orange, and I just go over that join a couple of times. So essentially pulling the orange out into the yellow section just to blend it a little bit more. The next style is similar to this, but instead of just having a small region of blending, you have a little bit of a bigger one. In this one, when laying down the colour for the first letter, you then extend that out about a third of the way into the next letter as well. You then use that region that's been extended out as a blending space for the next colour. In terms of the blending that I'm doing here, that's just done by making a jagged line between the two colours, and then taking the lighter of those colours, and going over where the two meet. I always do the blending with the lighter of the colours, because if I use the darker one, I just end up with a bigger zone of the dark colour. The dark colour will essentially mask the lighter one, rather than getting that blending, which is what I'm looking for. As you can see in this one, the area of blending is a lot bigger, rather than just the join between two letters. Both of these styles use a gradient colour palette. So multiple pens in a range of colours that I can use to get that gradient effect. But what you can actually do is achieve a gradient with only one pen. This is done through layering, so you start off with just one layer of your colour of choice, and then in the sections that you want your gradient to be darker, you go over with the same pen. This style is a lot easier when you're not working with an outline like I am here, just because then it's a lot easier to do the base lettering with uninterrupted strokes. This means that an even first layer will be a lot easier to achieve. As you can see, each of the letters here has a gradient that goes from lightest at the top to darkest down the bottom. 
To add a bit more depth to this one, you could of course use an additional color, like maybe a very dark green or even a slight touch of black, just at the bottom to really deepen that gradient. The next type of gradient we have can be achieved by using blending pens or water to help you blend the areas of your gradient together. By blending pen, I mean something like the N00 from Tombow, which is a colorless pen which is intended for blending. To do this one, you can start by putting your color down and then blending those colors together using either the blending pen or the water. Or what you can do is instead put your color on something like an acrylic block and then use your blending pen or a paintbrush with water to transfer the color to your lettering. Here you can see I've just put out some pink and orange and I'm using my paintbrush and just a little bit of water to transfer the color to the page. In this gradient I keep the colors separate with the pink at the bottom and the orange at the top. I layer the color on so that I make the very bottom and the very top the most saturated and then the color fades to white in the middle. Doing this means that I don't have to play around with properly blending from the pink into the orange or vice versa. But given that white section though, this style is better for when you're working with an outline like I am here, or otherwise making the white section quite thin so that you can still make out your letter forms. In this one you can see we again have the gradient within the letters, so similar to the green where it was dark up to light. This one we have pink through to orange, with a section of white in the middle. A similar idea to the one pen gradient can be used with multiple colors, as long as you're layering from lightest to darkest. In this one I start by writing the entire word in the lightest color, and then layer over this with a darker color, and then again with an even darker one. With each layer, I make sure to leave some of the one before it exposed, and blend the edge between that exposed lighter layer and the new darker layer with the lighter pen. So for instance, in this one, I start with the lightest blue, then place a darker blue on top of that, leaving the very tops of the letters just in that lighter blue. I then blend where the light and darker blues meet with that lighter blue pen to make that transition a bit softer. I then continue that process until I get to the darkest color being blended with the second darkest color at the very bottom of the word. I should add that this style in particular relies on you using colors that can layer one on top of another without drastically affecting what those colors are. So no bright medium yellow over a pale blue for instance. The yellow, although technically darker, still likely won't be able to mask the blue without going green. Following that idea, sticking to either a range of light to dark within one hue, or color ranges that are next to each other on the color wheel is advised. So red and orange, orange and yellow, yellow and green, etc. Sometimes what you want to do is blend colors of similar brightness though, and it can be a little bit difficult to figure out which color should be doing the blending. Of course, my biggest recommendation would be to do some trialing before you actually commit to anything you're going to put on a page. But you will find that one of the colors will allow you to blend better than the other, and it's always recommended to use that one. So for instance, if you're ever blending anything with yellow, yellow is usually the color that you're going to want to blend with. Most things that you put on top of yellow are going to mask the yellow, whereas blending with the yellow pen will actually result in blending. Having a look at a scheme of colors that are of similar brightness, what you want to do is instead of laying down the first layer with the lightest color, you want to start with one color either from the top, bottom, or wherever you're starting your gradient, and then work through to the next color, and then the next, and then the next. While in the previous gradients I've used colors that blend into each other quite easily, this one is a little bit trickier. For the others, the gradient I used had only been between one, two, or three hues, while this one covers six. With each of the pens being a distinctly different color to the ones on either side of it, the blending is certainly a bit more difficult. To tackle this, at any joining point, I first did the blending with whichever color it was going to be easiest to blend with. So for instance, yellow at the orange-yellow and yellow-green boundaries, and orange at the pink-orange boundary, etc. 
And then at the end, I went back over all of those boundaries with a paintbrush with a tiny bit of water. This just helped the overall gradient to come together quite nicely. As you've probably been able to tell, the easiest gradient to achieve is probably this one, with just the one pen where you layer it over itself. Following that, doing a gradient within the same kind of colour family, so all blue for instance. Or at least a series of pens where one colour is distinctly the lightest, going to a darker colour. And the trickiest to achieve is probably using colours that are all similar in terms of brightness. As some extra tips, some ways that you can really make this your own would be doing things like different styles of fonts and lettering. It doesn't have to be this calligraphy style that I've shown you here. You can certainly achieve gradient lettering just by using block letters or pretty much anything else. You can change up the way it looks by doing outlining, whether that be a tight fit around your letters or a bit looser around the word in general. And also change that up by using different thickness of pens, different coloured pens, that kind of stuff. You can do things like drop shadows, highlighting, some kind of a pattern overlay like sparkles or lines or something like that. And of course you can play around with different colour combinations. There is a lot you can do with this, and I certainly hope you take some time to try it out for yourself. Hopefully this video has given you some ideas, or at least some insight in how you can achieve gradient lettering. But thank you for watching team, if you liked today's video please do make sure to give it a big thumbs up, and if you wanted to see more from me, feel free to go check out one of my other videos. Until next time, bye!